Welcome to Fright Club, the horror movie battle ring where you vote for the winner. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and in this week's match, 1978's Halloween takes on 1982's The Thing to duke it out over which of John Carpenter's films is the greatest of all time. Halloween set a new bar in low-budget independent filmmaking, utilizing innovative techniques that built towards an ultimate night of terror in an ordinary suburban neighborhood. The film's success made Carpenter a household name and allowed him to move on to bigger budget studio productions where he would attempt his own rendition of The Thing, balancing now legendary practical effects with tense situation-based drama set against a stark Antarctic landscape. Both films have earned their rightful place in movie history, garnering John Carpenter's several generations of fans. And in celebration of the director's 73rd birthday this week, I figured it was the perfect opportunity to compare these two groundbreaking horror classics. Before we go any further, do me a favor and toss this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below which movie you think is the best. If you're new here and want to know how you can vote in the next match, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on the bell notifications, setting them to all. That way, you can get alerts to remind you when it's time to vote in the next poll. Without any further ado, let's take a look at the merits of each one of these films. I'll offer my humble opinion and we'll see if you agree with me or not when we find out which one you voted for to win this fright. While the dynamic of a surviving heroine versus a psycho killer certainly predated Halloween, Carpenter and his key collaborator Deborah Hill revolutionized the concept which would later turn into a full-fledged subgenre, paving the way for the likes of Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and a plethora of imitation slashers, none of whom were able to recapture the exact same magic. Together, the duo crafted a completely original screenplay, interweaving a triad of plot lines that follow a deranged mental patient, his theatrically inclined psychiatrist, and the unsuspecting civilians unlucky enough to get in the way, all taking place on a night made only more infamous by the iconic holiday on which it befalls. Halloween's plot points unfold pretty quickly and simply, with no red herrings or earth-shattering reveals, only the motif of inescapable fate and a straightforward depiction of Haddonfield Resident Evil. With his remake of the 1951 sci-fi horror classic, The Thing from Another World, John Carpenter and screenwriter Bill Lancaster would only pay homage in the loosest sense, instead choosing to derive most of their screenplay's content from the John W. Campbell Jr. novella, Who Goes There?, on which the story was originally based. The plot here never really deviates from its premise, opting instead to raise the stakes in its almost social experiment level observation of what people are capable of when they're marooned in an unforgiving environment. Where Halloween lays it all out from the get-go, The Thing joins the film already in progress, teasing its audience with mere elements of a story that were left to piece together. And with a great deal of this movie's action centering around its characters suspecting and accusing each other, we watch the mystery unravel in anticipation of the inevitable, gruesome, and traumatic reveal of who will be the next to go. This is a really difficult category to rank because neither of these movies fail when it comes to their story. The thing is so densely packed that there's still so much to uncover about it years later, but then a movie like Halloween is so accessible that you could literally watch it a thousand times and never get bored. I think for the fact that it was so groundbreaking and influential of its time, I'm gonna give this round to Halloween. Sadly, it's rare that a slasher film gives its audience adequate time with its primary characters, lending appropriate levels of humor and uncommonly endearing moments of pathos to the daily practices of teenagers and children. But with Halloween, every character makes enough of an impression for the audience to recognize who is on screen and what to expect from them. Laurie Strode is instantly likable, winning our interest and sympathy well before she encounters anything particularly horrific, and Dr. Loomis is vital as the de facto Van Helsing to Michael Myers' Dracula, but the supporting characters are pretty standard, which could be to this movie's benefit if you consider its setting of a typical American neighborhood. Otherwise, there's just not much depth to mine here, as we never go beyond the surface of any of the shape's victims, or even with the shape himself, which surprisingly works for this premise. Rarely has such a blank wall of a villain been so compelling to watch that it's kind of unexplainable why the absence of any motivation, speech, or insight would be so effective as a threat and an on-screen presence. The Thing, on the other hand, boasts an impressive stable of established actors, all playing easily discernible characters, which is no small feat with a cast of 12 men who are predominantly cloaked in winter gear, especially when you consider how most of them are introduced with little to no dialogue within the first 11 minutes of the film's runtime. 
But even when characters occupy less screen time than those in the foreground, it either means they're simply the kind of bystanders who wouldn't take the proverbial reins in any crisis, or that they're really the thing trying to fly under the radar so as not to arouse suspicion. In the end, every character makes an impression, either through the way they deal directly with the situation at hand, or through their association with some memorable reveal of the movie's big bad, which, as an antagonist, maintains a clear objective throughout the movie to simply assimilate and survive, characterizing a primal instinct that evokes an equally primal response from the crew. While characters like Lori, Loomis, and The Shape are all incredibly iconic in their own right, their interactions here are few and far between. And despite owing that to the talents of Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis, when you have an ensemble of such well-defined characters whose dynamic and interactions pump blood into the heart of your movie, there really is no question for me that this round doesn't belong to the thing. Halloween went into production with a $300,000 budget and a 20-day shoot. Its overall design doesn't feel premeditated, largely because most every environment seen here is an actual component of an actual neighborhood. The costumes were mostly unglamorous J.C. Penny fashions, the predominant light sources were practical in most day and night scenes, and the film's most horror-esque setting of the dilapidated Myers house just looks like a rundown structure where anyone could be squatting. Even the most iconic piece of wardrobe in the movie was purchased at a Hollywood costume shop for just under $2, but that doesn't necessarily mean it didn't all come together, as the combined efforts in this labor of love project and the modesty of the resources available all contributed to an authentically mild, small town feel. In contrast, Carpenter's musical composition made its mark on horror history, with not one, but an entire score's worth of spine-tingling tracks that are easily identifiable from their first chords alone. These are the elements that, to this day, qualify Halloween as a prime example of making the most out of what you have. Conversely, that might make The Thing a prime example of what you can achieve when granted the financial backing to reach the requirements of your imagination, as this time around, John Carpenter's budget topped out at $15 million. Like Halloween, the production design here around the men and their environments is unremarkable and pedestrian, positing a genuine world that audiences can easily access, even in extreme temperatures. This film, however, was not only presented with the task of creating a plausible Earth, but a plausible otherworldly element, which is pervasive in Rob Bottin's now legendary practical effects, brilliantly characterizing the alien parasite at various stages of assimilation, showcasing a formidable foe in every form it assumes, and with Ennio Morricone's Carpenter-esque score, augmenting the hopelessness of this predicament with lush symphonic rhythms, the production elements combine to not only match, but argue arguably surpass the already phenomenal achievements of Halloween. Normally, I would argue that less is more, and this is in no way a vote against Halloween, but because the thing was privileged to have had a gargantuan budget by comparison, John Carpenter was able to bring his vision to life in a way that he's never been able to do before. Halloween showcases an instant recognizability, no matter what scene you happen to arrive at, specifically when capturing tense moments at compelling angles, always in pursuit of something remarkable in a plain setting. What's most impressive is how effortlessly the camera seems to follow these characters, always revealing what the audience's eye would naturally be drawn to. But there's nothing particularly horrific to depict here, as we're just consumed by the everyday nature of human behavior until it gets perverted by the film's stoical outlier. Halloween remains relevant today because every simple cinematic element is in place to unsettle the audience. The film's triumph serves as a testament to its lasting effectiveness, not only from the time it was released, but 40 plus years later as well. However, the same can't be said for The Thing, as at the time of its initial release, the film suffered a terrible dismissal from critics and fans. John Carpenter retrospectively attributed this and the loss of his then multiple film contract with Universal to an intensity level that 1980 two audiences just weren't ready for. But the damage was already done, and as Carpenter turned his back on Hollywood, they had done the same to him. What The Thing shares with Halloween is a baseline sense of reality that leads us to accept whatever elements unveil themselves, and what sets it apart is the sheer size of its extravagant set pieces, lending an immersive device for the audience's reactions and discoveries, which aligns with the characters in real time. Since we only get to know as much as they do as we move from one tentative situation 
transition to the next, we join them as they reel from the movie's now appreciated broad theatrics. Luckily, due to the home video format and an ever-evolving public consciousness, the thing has earned its own cult status and reputability for its ambition, landmark special effects, and social commentary on what happens to communities when they're confronted with their own inescapable fate. For a movie like The Thing to have posthumously gained such critical reverence really speaks to its effectiveness and longevity, but for Halloween, its simplicity and style have become just as immortal as the shape itself. As a film, it means so many different things to so many different people, and as a franchise, it's left a lasting legacy. It pains me to not award this round to The Thing, but Halloween got it right from day one, and that's why it was such an instant success. The kills in Halloween 1978 rarely feature any blood, leaning more so into a tense precursor to each violent act, with the shape's signature heavy breathing acting as a perverse death knell. This feeds the audience's fear as we always realize what's coming next, even when the characters don't. And although small in numbers, basic in their approach, and redundant by modern standards, they do draw out a blueprint for all future slashers, and in some cases, originating urban legends, as Halloween would become one of the first instances of the killer hiding in the back seat. While it could be argued that what really sells these kill scenes is their believable nature, there's always an air of something quasi-supernatural, which only further goes to drive home the nightmare that is the unstoppable boogeyman. In terms of the kills in The Thing, that previously mentioned intensity that turned off critics and audiences in 1982 has gone on to be one of the film's cornerstone attractions. These effects have become so iconic that they've been replicated by countless FX artists who were inspired by their bombastic style. Present particularly in the kills of copper and windows, Rob Bottin showcases an artisanal touch which contributes to the collective dread felt by the surviving men at the station. The thing is an alien presence itself, kills with focus and intent, devoid of emotion outside of perhaps a manic state in its transformative scramble. And as fluids fly and orifices growl, even the rare bloodless kill doesn't exist outside of a surreal feverish dream. Again, not to discount on Halloween, but the last round here obviously goes to The Thing. You can't compete with this level of gore. But now that we've reviewed both movies, let's find out which one you voted for is the best. 5,955 people voted between Halloween and The Thing, and with 71% of the vote, the majority of you thought that Halloween was John Carpenter's best movie. With my score of 3 to 2 in favor of The Thing, I honestly have to say I'm a little disappointed the vote was this imbalanced, since while I love Halloween, The Thing is, in my opinion, a marginally better film. Even Carpenter himself prefers it. If you want to vote in the next Fright Club match, make sure to join me on my channel every Thursday where I'll post a new poll in the community section. Next week, we'll find out which update of the H.G. Wells classic you prefer when Hollow Man takes on the Invisible Man 2020. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporter Sean Connor. If you'd like to support this channel and Fright Club, head over to my Patreon page right now where you can unlock bonus content, such as early access to new episodes. Until next time, I've been Zach Cherry, and I'll be right back!